Okay, so this is the last one. I'm going to just show you what I uh, do on each one now. I actually quickly pop the cable this side of the foot, give the cable a good little tug to make sure I've got all the uh, spare wire slack that's in the arm, and that's uh, useful for when you hook it back to uh, locate the uh, connector into the motor circuit board. And then I go ahead and install the motor circuit board. Now the motor really does need to be lined up with its socket to line up then further out, further down. To do this you really need to get this circuit board as close to the final position for it as possible because it actually uh, will actually resist allowing the motor to position where it needs to, to go. A little bit twisting you would see the holes line up. You then want to get one of the small flat ended screws so they are different types you can feel the uh, types are different and you want to just let me just uh, get that going once you've got one in it's a lot easier because you're not holding everything in place at the same time so you want to just screw all three of those in and then turn your attention to the motherboard the circuit board sorry of the motor using then the different type of screw so now of course I'm using a pointed head screw I'm going to pop one of the rear ones on first making sure first that my cable for the motor circuit connection is in between the two posts. He says, open the screw, let's just do that again and might as well show you all of this. There we go. Make sure you've got a, a good straight alignment. You don't want to be biting into the plastic too much. Your memory of how tight and un when you untighten these uh, when you're removing from the old unit is, uh, is one of the best ways to know how tight you need to re-secure. The end motherboard, I keep saying motherboard, the end connection here on the circuit board for the motor is actually quite in line with the foot. So it's a little bit difficult, I'm going to rest the screw there, to get a, a very neat initial alignment. However, if you undo this double-ended tool from Parrot, you're suddenly then able to. So what I'm going to quickly do now is start the uh, threading process and then finish off by putting this back into the handle so I can get more prize on the actual screw itself. Now I've managed to let go here so that wasn't very clever. Let's try that again. What I'm probably going to do myself is magnetize this screw driver by resting a bar magnet on it for some weeks before I uh, put it away so that next time um, it's a lot easier. So as you can see I'm actually able to get a, a really straight alignment here so I can make sure I'm putting that screw in absolutely in line with the uh, the lug, the peg here. But the finishing turns, because I can't quite grip with just my fingers around the uh, metal shaft, I'm going to pop it back in its handle, tighten it all back up again and although I'm now slightly angled I'm going to, I'm sure, be able to get enough bite just try and get that in to tighten this and there we are so finish that off and uh, with regards to the screws I'm now going to just do the, the connector now this is quite fiddly as well so you want to look into the socket to make sure you've got the right orientation again it's uh, impossible to put it in the wrong way around so if you feel resistance you've probably got it upside down you really need to force this connector over. You've given yourself enough cable, and I think pulling the cable along the shaft is the best tip I can give you. And then it just slides in. You don't actually get a click on this one like some of the other connectors, but it does feel quite snug. So hopefully you can see that, and that's now in. And I've now done all four of the motors, and I've got to just finish off the, the last few screws on that one, and uh, we're nearly done.